Hey friends, I am super proud of this project I have to share with you today. Um, I've been wanting to make coffee ornaments for a really long time, like years, but I just never got around to it. Ornaments are something I really love to make every year as gifts to give to friends. When you know, you, you know when you just need like a little something to give someone, I think ornaments are just the best. So I've made tons of these over the years. I'll put a link to a blog post um, that shares lots of the ornaments I've made. Some of the patterns I made up, some of them I bought, some of them were free, but this one is an original and I played with like five coffee cup designs before landing on this and I think it's so cute. So you can purchase this pattern in my shop, which I'll link below um, and you'll need that because it comes with all the pattern pieces and it will come with written instructions with photos. But as usual for all my patterns, I'm gonna make a video walkthrough of this also. So I'll try to make this beginner friendly, but I would say this is more of an intermediate project just because of this clear part, but you can do it. Don't think that if you're a beginner, you can't do it because I still think you can. So um, before we get started, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss new tutorials. Make sure you click the link to get the pattern, print that off and come back and learn how to make these cute coffee ornaments. Let's get going. Okay, things you're gonna need besides the pattern are some fabric scraps. I'm gonna make a pink drink this time. I've made coffee with brown and I've made uh, matcha with the greens. So whatever color your favorite drink is, that's what kind of fabric scraps you'll need. Of course, you can just use one fabric for the whole piece. That's fine too. But I like to, I think it's cute if you mix two. You're also gonna need some green ribbon for the straw some other ribbon for the hanger. Mine is pretty skinny. You don't need to get this skinny. Um, let's see, for this one I added some beads. I'm not gonna demonstrate that today, but if you want to add sprinkles, then you'll need little seed beads or something. And let's see what else. Oh, you also need this clear vinyl. You can get this at the fabric store on the bolt. I've had this one piece that I got in the remnant bin and it's lasted me literally years. Um, it's kind of like what comes on like a, you know, if you have a bag with like a clear insert, oh, like a wallet that you put your ID behind. So if you have anything that you can cut up that's like this, you could just use that too. But you're also going to need a scrap of tissue paper for when you sew this. So have that ready too. I think that's everything. Oh, you'll need some wonder clips. If you don't have those, I'm sure you can improvise with paper clips or something because you can't put pins in your vinyl. It will leave permanent holes. All right, let's get started. So first I'm gonna piece, I've cut these five inches by three inches, but it doesn't need to be that precise. I'm just gonna go sew these together along this edge and press it. Okay, here it is. While I was pressing that, I realized I forgot to say you'll also need some felt scraps. Felt is what the whipped cream and background are made of and the circle with the heart. So you'll need felt scraps for that too. Okay, so I'm going to place my pattern piece right here with the seam on this dotted line and cut around it. <laughs> my rotary cutter squeaks. Okay, so now I have my cup shape. The next thing is to cut out my cup and whipped cream shape out of this piece. This would be more hard to cut out with a rotary cutter, so I'm gonna use scissors. Once again, I have lost my scissors. Okay. When you cut the felt, you wanna make sure you don't have any weird angles or anything. Try to just make the edges look really smooth because obviously it does not get hemmed. Carefully cut around the tip. Okay, let's see how that looks. Get the whipped cream tip kind of perfect. There, all right. I'm going to place my cup on here and I'm gonna go use 
white thread, or you can use matching thread, it's up to you, to sew around it, about an eighth of an inch from the edge. The edges will be raw, but they'll also be encased in the plastic, so they won't unravel. Okay, now you're going to cut a small piece of this for a straw. Let's see how long. You need an inch and a half to two inches. And we're gonna get a glue stick and glue this to the back about like this. Okay, I'm just gonna place some glue here so that that sticks. Place it where I want it and then let it dry. Okay, also next I'm going to fray check the end of that so that my ribbon straw does not unravel. I'm actually gonna move it so it's more like here. This is just a product called Fray Check. I will link to it, it dries clear. Okay, let's let that dry. Now is the time you would want to hand sew on some beads. Um, I would do it with white thread because your thread will show on the back. You don't want to knot off after every bead. So I just strung them together on the back and you really can't see it. But you know, when you hang an ornament on a Christmas tree, it sort of turns around and you don't want it to look super ugly. You want it to blend in. So if you do do some seed beads, just string them along. It only takes a minute and it makes it look really cute. But I don't have anything pink, sadly. Okay, let's just let this dry. In the meantime, we can cut our vinyl. So I've cut a small piece off of my big roll. I've had this for so long, I have to wipe all the dust off and I have to find a spot that's not wrinkly. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna fold this in half. It kind of sticks to itself, so that's convenient. Then I'm going to take this pattern piece. You can see these are my hand-drawn pieces, not my printed ones. Yours won't look ugly on the back like that. Okay. You don't want to put pins in the vinyl, so you just sort of have to hold it on while you cut it out. I am not using my fabric scissors. I am using paper scissors. Okay, so once you've cut those two layers out, you're going to take them apart if you can. Mine are very stuck together, wow. Oh my gosh, I've never had this happen before. Okay, phew. You're going to sandwich your little guy, your little cup in here. I hope you can see this okay on the video. It is clear after all. Sandwich that in there. Try to center it. Line up the edges of your vinyl. And we're gonna place clips. Clip this whole thing together. If you have some alligator clips, if you don't have these wonder clips, which I will link to because they are wondrous, and you'll use them a lot, I promise. I'm going to clip them here. But alligator clips will also work if you have miniature clothespins for some reason laying around your house. That will also work, just don't put pinholes in it. Okay, I'm going to switch to black thread. And you can see on this one, I sewed all the way around and then I sewed a rectangle down here, and then I zigzagged through the rectangle. So this will appear like the, the lids you get at the coffee shop. This isn't necessarily a Starbucks ornament, but it could be if you're a fan. <laughs> Wait, one very important thing. <laughs> you have to, because your sewing machine is gonna wanna stick to the vinyl, you have to use a layer of tissue paper to help it not stick. If you don't use tissue paper, then the feed dogs and the presser foot are gonna work against each other with this sticky vinyl. Some people also use a Teflon foot for their sewing machine that's like helps it glide along, but I don't have that. And I find this works well. And then after we sew it, the tissue paper just tears right off. So I'm gonna go sew this with tissue paper underneath it. If your machine has trouble, then try it with tissue paper on top. 
And if you still have trouble, try it with both. I'm jumping back in here after the fact to tell you more about sewing with this vinyl because I don't feel like I gave you enough information. So yes, you definitely need the tissue paper on the bottom of your project and that helps the feed dogs part not stick. But on the top, to prevent your presser foot from sticking, you can do one of two things. This is what I do, you can use a walking foot. I've mentioned one of these in several of my other videos. So if you don't already have one, I promise you, you'll use it a lot. You can get one to fit your machine and this one will fit on almost any low shank machine. My machine though, a FAF has it built in. So if you have a FAF or I think Bernina's also have built-in walking foot, some of them. So if you have one of those nicer machines, it might already have one, in which case just use that and you'll be fine. Otherwise you need to attach the walking foot. This will help the top layer of vinyl move along slowly without sticking. Another option is to get a Teflon foot for your sewing machine. I don't have one of these to show you. I've never used one, but I hear they're amazing. And if you don't have either of these things and you wanna try it anyway, you can also attach some washi tape to the bottom of your regular presser foot and that will help the vinyl slide through instead of stick. I hope that clarifies some things. Okay, here's an update. I've sewed around the entire edge. Now I'm gonna go back and sew this rectangle right here. Since we're using black thread, we don't need to be super precise because the imprecise rectangle sewing actually adds to its quirkiness. And so I'm gonna sew this rectangle, just sort of eyeballing it. I'm gonna start on one end and aim for the other end using kind of my lid line or my pink line here to guide. Alrighty, look how cute. Okay, before I tear my tissue paper off, I need to make my little heart logo. So I'm going to use my circle pattern to cut my white felt. Again, trying to make the edges pretty darn smooth. Okay, there's that. I'm going to use red felt for my heart. You can use my pattern piece or you can do what I do every time and just eyeball it. So, I don't know, does that heart look weird? That one looks weird, I'm gonna try another one. <laughs> it was a little too wide. Okay, I'm gonna go sharper up. That's better. Okay, so on this one, I was too lazy to change thread and I used white and I regretted it. This one, I made the thread match. So I'm gonna sew, and I think it looks better. I'm gonna sew my red heart on with red thread onto this white dot. Then I'm gonna come back and use white thread to sew it onto my cup. Okay, here's my heart. Let me get the red fuzz off. If you have trouble sewing it around these tiny curves, especially if you're a beginner, no judgment here if you just decide to glue it. <laughs> I like the stitching because I think it adds some cute dimension. Okay, so now I'm going to, again, do the not lazy thing, switch my thread color, and I'm gonna center the circle on the cup and sew around it. It looks good. Okay, let me get my tweezers. Now we can, before we sew the hanger on, we can remove this tissue paper. It should come right off without pulling your stitches out. Some tweezers like this can be helpful to sort of get in there. So tear all of that off. If you have the patience to get all the tissue paper out of this rectangle, you go right ahead. <laughs> I do not have that kind of patience. And so I left it. And look, you can't even see it from the front. Okay, last step is to cut a length of ribbon for your hanger. The first one I made of these, I sewed the ribbon in as I was sewing the vinyl, but my ribbon ended up like over here because <laughs> I couldn't really gauge where the center was and then I think it shifted or something. So now I do it after the fact. I should have been a smart person and done it with my black thread when it was still threaded black, but I didn't. So I'm going to knot the ends. 
when I'm done, I'll um, trim that and fray check it. Okay, I'm gonna sort of, this is a very skinny ribbon. You don't have to use this skinny of ribbon. But since our lid is kind of see-through, we don't wanna put it so far down that it shows like that. We wanna put it just on the end here, just on the edge of the ribbon. Also, since it's tiny, I can't really clip it. So I'm just gonna go place a tiny bit of tissue paper under here. And I'm gonna sew across my ribbon, making sure that my needle catches both ends. And I'm gonna sew back and forth a couple times. Okay, my ribbon loop is attached pretty securely. So you can remove this tissue paper. And there you go. The ribbon loop is honestly probably the fussiest part of this whole project. Um, so if you really struggle, you could, um, you could just put a hole in your lid piece here, a tiny hole and thread the ribbon through. That's an option. Or you could try, like I mentioned the first time and why can't I get this tissue paper out? And you could sew it in as you sew the clear vinyl together. Just whatever works. There we go, there's my finished pink drink. So cute, so now I have my pink drink, my matcha ornament, and my coffee or frappuccino, whatever you wanna call it. Um, if you make some of these, I would love to see them. Tag me on Instagram at pinkcutso or shoot me an email. I'll put a link to my blog below so you can go scope out all the other sewing content and inspiration I have on there. I have tons of beginner friendly tutorials. And be sure and check out my pattern shop where I post new patterns pretty often. So if you're trying to make Christmas gifts, that's the place you want to go. And you don't have to wait on the mail to get them. They're PDFs. You just download them. So I think that's it. Be sure and subscribe and I'll see you soon.